Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Today let's check out the M5 Stack Atom Light LCD Display Driver Kit. This basically gives the Atom Light an HDMI output up to 1280x720p so your little Atom Light can have a really big display. Let's go ahead and do the unbox here. Yeah, it's that's it. It's the Atom Light attached to the display unit there. You can pop that off, but you want to keep them together, obviously. And this does include the Atom Light. And they also include this screw and hex key for mounting. And there's a variety of mounting applications baked into the case here. First, you're going to want to download the UIFlow firmware burning tool, M5 Burner. This is so that you can begin to work with the Atom Light display unit. You're really just launching an executable. I have a shortcut on my desktop to the executable. You select the Atom, and then within the Atom category, scroll down to the Atom display. I've already downloaded the latest image, 1.10.0. Let's go ahead and burn it. Select the correct serial port and start. We'll go ahead and crop and compress this a little bit. There we go, the burn is successful. Now you want to go into the configuration. Again, select the correct serial port and now you're loading the native configuration from the Atom Light. The very first thing you want to get from here is the API key. This way you can work with the Atom Light in flow.m5stack.com UI flow online. So we want to make a record of that. That's my API key. Then I'm also going to set my Wi-Fi, SSID, and password and I really recommend keeping your Atom Light in internet mode for the start mode. That way you can interactively send code over and over again without having to uh, physically attach the Atom Light to your USB port or anything like that. So essentially uh, over the air updates to the software. All right, I'm gonna copy my API key and now we're in UI flow. Let's go ahead and connect to the Atom Light display paste my API key, select the Atom Light display unit. Okay, we're connected to the Atom Light display unit. The first thing you want to do is click into Screen Simulator. Here you're going to drag the types of objects that you're going to want to work with in your display. So you can see I've got a square, a circle, a triangle, an image, a line. We might want a label in there. Oh yeah, you can have a title bar across the top with a different background color. We're going to want several labels here. Basically, my first demo, I'm going to have random shapes in random locations of random colors of random dimensions on the screen. And we're going to display the red, green, and blue values and the X, Y, 1 and X, Y, 2 values on the screen. So we're going to get all that on here. Yeah, here you can see the various objects, screen, the attributes you can set for that, line, triangle, image. Again, you can set the colors, the dimension, the position, circle, rectangle, label. You can set the font in label. Title has a font color and a background color. Now, when we look at the code, it's important to display things in the proper order because they'll overwrite each other essentially on the screen. And you also want to play around with the show and hide commands that can help you again control which items are displaying on top of each other in the screen. Took me a little playing around with it. I'm still working on it a little bit. Yeah, you see I'm generating uh, random numbers here for the colors and uh, X, Y, 1, and 2 values. Uh, position the circle, a particular radius of the circle, the color of the circle, same for the rectangle, the line, and then we're also going to show those values on the screen using these label commands. We're going to wait a period of time, 
and then we're going to hide everything. Let's go ahead and run that. Here it is on the big screen. Yeah, it's okay. There's sort of an artifact where the previous object leaves an artifact in the next view. Uh, I went ahead and hacked it a little bit more and played more with the show hide commands and it seems to work a little better here but yeah there's still like an artifact from the previous display so you want to play around with this a little bit more now how many years in the restaurant business before I got into IT and I really see this as an application for a, a public kiosk a public display like the today's special board yeah that when I saw this it's like yeah this could be the today's special board at the restaurant so let's look at the code a little bit. Yeah, we've got the title, today's special. And we're going to import a couple of different images and apply a couple of different labels. Now it's important to note that the images obviously should be the aspect ratio that you want on your screen. And they also have to be smaller than 50 kilobytes in size for the image. So I used this online JPEG compression tool and that allowed me to set the compression percentage to get the images below the 50 kilobyte limit. So we import the image, show the label, and wait a few seconds and then hide the image and hide the label. And then we import the second image and show it and show the label, wait a few seconds and then hide them again. Again, that show and hide commands are very useful. Let's go ahead and run this. Again, leaving it, Adam, in internet mode lets you send this interactively. So if I need to raise the price of the menu item, I can just type it in and hit run again. Because it's in internet mode, the Adam will accept the new code automatically. It's like over the air update. Yeah, these were actual menu items from my 4th of July weekend. We had some breakfast, a little lunch. I don't have any dinner pictures from my 4th of July weekend. But yeah, fish taco, breakfast burrito. $3, that's a good price. This would be great in a restaurant or displaying particular information in a public kiosk, etc. So, leave a comment down below on what you think you'd do with the Atom Light Display Unit. Give this video a like. And before you go watch more of my M5 Stack videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.